G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today we're back on TikTok, we're live on the internet, searching around to answer the one pivotal question that's asked out there by many women across the world. Where have all the good men gone? Let's jump in and have a bit of a laugh at these guys. I'm 53. It has been several years. Where are all the good men? I'm tired of being alone. I want to share my life with someone. I am just freaking tired. I want to be in love. I want to share my life with someone. I want to feel the joys. I want to feel have my hands held. I want to be held. I want to kiss. I want to support. I want to make coffee with that person. I want, I want my person. I want my person. Why is it so hard to find your person? I'm tired. I'm Gotta love the sob stories that they put on TikTok, you know. Let me, I'll, I'll answer a question for you without being a complete asshole, or even I might come across that way. It's done. Those guys who may have been your person, uh, or someone who may have wanted to fit the role of a person, jump through all the hoops. As you can imagine, guys, the way she's carrying on, she's carrying on like a pork chop, as we say over in Australia. She's 53 years old, making TikToks in her car, crying, heavily made up, completely manufactured. Can you imagine how much work would go involved to maintaining a woman like this? And is it worth it to be doing this with a 53-year-old woman? So the person that she's talking about is Mr. Fantasy Man. It's James Bond. He's just come back from his mission, you know, uh, in Europe taking down Spectre, the Spectre Society, whatever they're called. And she wants him to come and drive up the driveway in his Maserati and make coffee together, be her person, love, hold her, cherish her. She's not asking where the person, the guy down at the local Woolworths or Coles is, you know, the store manager, you know, the 53-year-old store manager who's um, in a little bit out of shape, but he's a good guy. He's a nice guy. He'll look after her. He'll make her coffee. He'll come up behind her in the morning and nuzzle her, you know? And she doesn't want that. She wants um, Daniel Craig. So that's where he is. And I've got news for you. He doesn't exist. So you can continue crying or potentially lower the standard. And it does truly boggle my mind um, seeing that there are people still in their 50s carrying on like the girls do in their 20s. So I can I know where he is. He's running away, far away from you. Let's jump on to the next clip. Okay, so I got a question for all the men out there. Now, I'm just going to preface this by saying I'm 55 years old. I live in Vancouver, Canada. Been single for three years. I have not dated. I recently took a boo at the dating apps. <laughs> oh my. I think it's amazing, you know, and look, she's holding up okay for an older lady. You know, she looks quite feminine and stuff like that. The question these women don't ask themselves is, how am I marketing myself to someone who's going to want to take me on? Because these women don't go on dating apps or out dating looking, you know, for casual dates, you know, fun and company. Now they're looking for another provider another guy to sign up, another guy to sign over his superannuation policy, become a life insurance policy. Women at this age, they're not looking for, hey, let's go down to the local RSL, play some pokies, you know, smash out, uh, you know, fucking pirate parts of the Caribbean on the on the pokies, $1 a line. No, she's not wanting that. She's going to want the top of the top guys. And then they go, shit, I've been single three years. I probably come out of a long, maybe a long-term marriage, and I'm using her as an example. I don't know this woman, right? But using these people as examples, they come out of long-term relationships, and they think they're just going to get on the dating app and get a new husband pretty quick. And you hear them just start complaining about, it, like, oh, what? The dating apps is shocking. It's uh, it really is something uh, to take marvel of that the expectation of of women in their fifties and and beyond coming back onto the dating market. There's always going to be guys like. You know, a lot of these channels out there, they say, oh, they're going to be sitting at home with their cats and all this shit. But reality is there's a thousand dudes who will, you know, fucking cut their arm off to run a, a schlong up her. You know, that's just the way it is. That's the way men are. Most men don't understand how women operate and what she's looking for. It's not just to hang out with a guy, uh, have a nice, um, relaxed time, enjoy each other's company, you know, genuinely. It's always 
there's always a mark, especially women at these age are looking for something, gentlemen. So I've experienced this much so in my 30s. And I went out with a few women. I want to say I went out, I dated and stuff, early 40s, talked to them, stuff like that. And it's always the same old story. They're looking to lock down a guy, latch onto him, uh, and be elevated into his life without even helping him get there. So I'll answer her question. This video goes on for a bit. I'm going to answer her question. Where are the good guys? They've already built their lives. Now, there's either one or two scenarios. They've built their lives, and they have a woman who's been with them the whole time, okay, and who has earned that loyalty, trust, and to bring them along for the ride. They're gone. They're married. They're, those guys are not on dating apps. They're not on Hinge, Bumble, Plenty of Fish, wherever these chicks hang out. And they say, oh, well, fucking Daniel Craig wasn't on Plenty of Fish. Then there's the other guy. There's the other guy who is likely might have been a long-term relationship. Uh, he may have been married. He's gone through the ringer. Uh, he's been put through, you know, he signed up to the deal. He signed the contract without knowing he was getting into. Uh, it's ended badly for him. He's probably been recovering for five or 10 years. You know, there might have been kids involved. Now, there might have been a, a hard financial settlement involved, splitting up assets. This guy's probably been close to zeroed out and he's working his way back up to a good life. And so the last thing he is going to do is jump on a dating app and do it again and sign over and hand over the keys to the kingdom. Because generally as men age, and if men do learn, some never do, but as men do learn and go through hardships, they start to become a bit more protective of a number of factors. One is going to be your finances. One's going to be your time. And one's going to be your emotional health because men really do suffer pretty hard in breakups. And so they're protecting themselves and that's where they are. They're not jumping in and just signing, signing a deal like they might have done, you know, when they're in their 20s. So here is my question. Where are the real men? Gone. I mean, I come from an age or an era or whatever, an upbringing in the 80s, at least in my household, that was traditional. You know, I love doing laundry. I like making dinner. I like making a special home and having traditions and putting up the Christmas tree and all of these nice things. You gotta love that. They always go for the sales pitch because they know exactly what a man wants to hear. A man wants to hear this. He wants to hear he's going to have the woman, uh, his woman who he thinks the world of at home and, you know, only has eyes for him and, uh, you know, he's a little traditional woman and, and, and she really helps out and does things around the house and makes him feel loved and looks after her family. But that isn't what you get a lot of the time. They put on this sales pitch. That's what they're all about. You move them in and uh, you get something completely different. So massive bait and switch. So that's why guys start learning. You got to see actions. You can't just leave these chicks. They want to go out with a guy for two months and then move into his house. You know, get the keys to the kingdom, as I said, very quickly. And there are guys out there who do that. They don't know any better. And like, oh, fuck. And they end up here on my channel because I got fucking wiped out. I also like to respect my man and look up to him and honor him. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want him to be smarter than me. I want to learn something from him. And I also want him to be able to protect me. Daniel Craig. You know, he knows how to throw a punch. I don't know, shoot a deer maybe. Just protect me. Make me feel safe in the company of him and out there in the world. Now, talking about the world, we all know that it's a little batshit crazy. So I'm also looking for a man who knows that the world is a little batshit crazy. Not somebody who's sleeping, somebody who knows that the world is about shit crazy. But here's the problem. I can't find anybody here. And I must admit, I really haven't gone looking. <laughs> what? I can't find something. I haven't looked for it. <laughs> uh, it's going to fall into your lap, is it? And like, she seems quite nice, right? But you don't know, this is someone at face value. I'm not picking on this particular woman. I'm picking on these types of women. It's interesting because you must, look, let's just say she was married for 30 years or whatever it is. I could see how coming out into the new world of dating with all the technology and the change of the culture and, you know, everyone's all defensive and stuff like that, how that could be really hard. But she's, she's already said she's not looking. So, I mean, I can't have too much sympathy for her. 
And I guess the reason I haven't gone looking is because whenever I come across a man in public, yeah, that puts his head down, goes on his phone immediately, turns the other way. He's running it's away. It's the weirdest thing. It really is. Now, I got to tell you, I also love going backpacking and hiking and getting dirt under my nails, gardening and not showering for a week when we're out in the forest and then jumping into an ice cold lake and calling it a day. That's me. I got both sides. If you want to take me out to the theater, I can dress in high heels and a beautiful dress and look like the classiest gal you've ever seen. But I don't think guys want that nowadays. In fact, I don't really know what they want. I'm not the kind of girl that goes and gets pedicures and eyelashes yeah, and good. all that stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just not me. I am pretty much as natural as it gets. Yep, let my gray hair grow in too. All right, I'm gonna, she's just rambling on, okay? But that's another point. Men generally, okay, there are some men who like that stuff, that manufactured look. I'm gonna speak from my own um, preference is all that made up stuff, you know, like makeup, uh, eyelashes, eyebrows painted on, uh, hair extensions, tans, Botox, lip fillers. That stuff's not attractive uh, to me in any sense of the word. And when I do see a woman who does those sorts of things, I, I, I automatically they get put in the VN Calais uh, bucket, the back of the cricket club bucket. That's that's. You put yourself there, whether it's overly judgmental and not warranted well, it's just my normal defense mechanism for, as I call them, blue ring octopuses. So a woman who's covered in all the makeup and the hair and all that, too much work, too much effort, uh, probably going to cost you too much money and cause you a lot of trouble, I've noticed uh, in my experiences. So I call them blue ring octopuses, they're going to fuck your life up. All right, guys, about halfway through. Uh, if you're enjoying the show uh, and me getting back on TikTok, definitely let me know in the in the comments. Uh, TikTok, sorry. Uh, aiming for 10,000 subs. So if you're enjoying the content, please sub uh, to the channel. Greatly helps me out. And watch through to the end. Is that is what greatly helps me? So I'm not going to bullshit you and carry on and, and uh, try and make you hang around with a hook. If you want to see me grow, the best way is just to stick around and watch the clips and interact in the comments. I hear a lot of women say things such as where are all the good men gone or oh. that they want to be in a relationship with an awakened um, masculine man. And this is great. But the reality is, is that you are not going to attract a man like that in your life Ever. unless you are at his level. And when I say at his level, I don't mean financially. I don't mean employment status. I don't. <laughs> of course not, because you're never going to get there uh, most of the time. Let me guess, she's going to come across and say some spiritual energy. You need an awakened man. He's masculine. And a masculine man loves to give money and give his life away uh, to women. Uh, that's the programming that goes on. Guys like, oh, yeah, well, I'm a masculine man. So uh, therefore, I better go and spend all my money and I'll give it to you. Oh, because I'm masculine. <laughs> Uh, she's going to say some bullshit like that. I'm going to say one thing, guys. Don't get involved with women who got nothing to their name. Okay, Even in middle, middle age, doing that is the worst. Yeah, cool when you're young. You never know where life's going to go. But you still need to be careful of watching women's spending habits and all that sort of stuff. And that's, another, that's a topic for another video. Don't let a woman inject herself into your life when she has nothing to offer and when she has massive leverage to take you for a ride. Keep your eyes open, gentlemen. Don't listen to this hocus pocus very very shit i don't mean looks i mean at his level at his frequency his energetic frequency <laughs> an awakened what? masculine man has done the work he mm. is at a level where he is comfortable in his skin he is um, driven with purpose and he is only going to look at or embark on a relationship with a woman who has done her own inner work who has tended to her ancestral and generational wounds, what? who is comfortable in her feminine energy. An awakened masculine man will not just settle for any type of woman. Yeah. He will look and find Tell us what we'll an do. awakened feminine woman. Yeah, they love, they love making this shit up and they sell things to people. Good on them. They come up with these theories, these psychological psycho babble, you know, getting on the same frequencies and shit like that. Can't make this shit up. Give each other the worst advice ever. Are you an awakened masculine man? If you're an awakened masculine man, put it in the comments.
All right, let's check this dumpster fire out. Good men finish last. I'm going to say it again. Good men finish last. And I'm going to tell you why. It's very true. Here comes this man after you've been hurt, abused, cheated on, lied to, been with a narcissistic, whatever your case is. Oh, this is every chick of the dating apps. Come on. You've, you're not accountable for where you are in life. You've been lied, hurt, cheated, you're narcissistic. You're a victim. You're a victim. You've done nothing wrong. You haven't gone and trampled over hundreds of men in your life. No, it's just that one Chad, that one Brycey Steve-O, who has um, done the same number on you. Now you've been hurt. Love it. He comes in. He shows you your love. You're appreciated. You're respected. He treats you like a queen for the first time in your life. <laughs> but you have trouble understanding what you did to deserve it. Yeah, you love him so much. And then all of a sudden he does one thing that disappoints you, one thing that hurts you, upsets you, whatever the case is. May not be the end of the world. He didn't cheat on you. He didn't hurt you. But it's one thing that you're just like, whoa, red flag, defense mechanism. Up goes the... Fucking guys, stop saving these chicks. Like, this is what you got. This is what you got to look forward to. So, yeah, they go out. It's just a, it's the same old thing that we all know. They go out. They get pumped and dumped by guys like fucking Brycey, Steve-O used up, put themselves in situations where they get emotional damage over and over again. And then a, a good guy, so a good guy who's not aware of all this stuff, what goes on in the world, he comes in with the blindfolds on, he's walking around the world with blinkers on, and he inherits this, this behavior. And he thinks he's doing the right thing by sticking around and trying to rescue and nurture this woman who's never going to truly love him. He's a punching bag. He's the only guy he's stuck around with her for years, you know, or, or, or after years, I mean. He, he's stuck around after years of her getting passed around or passing herself around. This is what you have to look forward to. The good men, and I can't speak, because I'm, I'm not a nice, Mr. Nice, good guy, okay? I've been that many years ago, but I'm not, I'm not a bad guy, but I'm not this good man who puts up with rubbish and you know gets punched in the face. Where are the good men? They've probably been burnt and turned, uh, turned to the dark side. Uh, they've gone to the NWO. They've done the Hulk Hogan heel turn because they've been smashed by birds like this. When... They were doing the right thing and trying to help somebody. So they get bitter as well. They go, what the hell? They go the red pill. They start looking for answers. The wall. Here comes an attitude. You want to argue. You want to scream. You want to yell. Or you just completely shut down. Because that's what you do when you feel hurt. But if you think that no one on this planet is going to hurt you and you have that expectation that this man is so great that he is never going to disappoint you or let you down, that is where you disrespect yourself. Not one person is perfect. We are never going to do something to where we're never going to hurt people. <laughs> we are going to disappoint, just like you're going to disappoint him one day. Uh, but it's not the end of the world. You talk through it, you fight through it, and you accomplish a healthy relationship. Stop letting good men pay for your ex, your last situationship, whatever that man in the past did to you, don't let your current man pay for it. Sign up for it, boys. You're going to cop all this shit because she's uh, holding on to emotional damage from the last situationships. Situationships, guys. That equals getting pounded in the VN. There is no relationship there. They put a little ship on it. It's just not even a situation. The guy texts her, says, meet you behind Cricket Pavilion. Bam, bam, bam. 2 a.m. in the rain. And then there are guys who don't know that women do this stuff, but they try and take them on. They think that she says, oh, I've been single for four years. I mean, I haven't been sent, you know, I haven't had a boyfriend for four years. That means she's been sitting at home. You're knitting. When she's really been out taking probably miles of schlong. That's just what happens. Good men finish last because they teach you that they're good men. They show you your work and theirs. Stop letting good men pay for your past. Yeah, good men. So beta guys, I hate using that term, but that's just the men who know no better. I'm going to call them plugged in men who don't know how women operate and will put up with just endless amounts of shit because that's what you do. Happy wife, happy life, happy girlfriend, happy life, whatever you want to say. You know, if the missus is happy, everyone's happy. You know, that sort of saying. So guys will put up with just heaps of amounts of shit just for the 2% that can be good with these kinds of damaged women. So really good men, they have these women, and then they don't go back because they've been hurt so badly by them that they don't want to date anymore. That's where. Anymore because they're so hurt. I figured it out. I know where all of the men 
who are seeking emotional connection and mental connection and spiritual connection are. Are you ready to hear where they are? Go on. They're at home. They're at the gym. They're at work. They're busy healing themselves and they don't have any more time to be seeking out different people at bars or clubs or out in the streets because that's not where they are all right if you are looking for one find them at your local grocery store find them at your local gym all right this is where they are because they are focused they are tired of having don't do that like, women are hunters and i've always said this in all my videos like you're a mark guys like women are always out there hunting for men and to lock in men you think you're the one out there hunting, um, you know, for, for the girl. No, they're letting you do it, okay? Uh, they're out there going to Bunnings, uh, bloody run clubs, all this shit. You see articles everywhere about women trying to find where men are. Men of status, men of value, not just any guy. They want to go and get corporate guys. They go to these run clubs. That's a new thing now in Melbourne, I've been hearing, in Melbourne, Australia. They infiltrate male spaces or spaces that aren't even made for dating and try and turn them into that. Can't make it up. Having women take advantage of them. They are tired of getting manipulated. And apparently they have all just dealt with a lot of narcissist people and they're just sick of it. So they're not even willing to put themselves out there anymore because they're so hurt and they cannot get past certain traumas that they've dealt with now i understand this all right and i think that's fair but i think it's actually a really big problem that everyone's hiding okay because if someone is wanting to connect and if you want this stability or of emotional connection or mental connection it's important to put yourself out there and if you're constantly living in your past experiences, you're taking away so much from your present moment. So, yeah, look, I see what she's saying. Um, you know, it really is. Don't bleed on people who haven't cut you. But uh, I think a lot of people, uh, everyone has baggage, especially as we get older. Uh, and I wouldn't say so much it's a bad thing as long as you use your prior experience to help you make better judgment calls and decisions. Like people get hurt, women hurt men, men hurt women. What isn't talked about as much in society and why I have these channels is these good guys, they get crushed. They get used up, spat out, money taken off them, kids taken off them. Start again when you're 40, 50, 60 years old, never coming back from it. Mental health, you know, it's where are these good men? They've been chewed up, spat out, and they're not coming back to the dating market because they're afraid of it happening again. So while she makes some good points, I think, is it really worth it? Is it really worth it when you've been there and done that to go back in and put everything at risk if you've been able to build yourself back up or even just survive? I don't know. I'll leave that with you guys. That's enough for me today, gents. Look, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.